All right, lesson number four. Lesson number four is all about personalization. Personalization, simply put, can help you increase your open rates, response rates, and success rates in general because you got their attention. The person felt like you were targeting them specifically. So let's talk about how to do personalization right. Do more than just the first name. I know my first name. You don't need to tell me my first name. And frankly, more often than not, when people try to put the first name in, um, for a handful of uh, people, they end up kind of getting the brackets in there and that like insert first name or whatever brackets, whatever tool you're using. So, you know, go beyond that. I like to stick to two to three personalizations in a message because anything more is a little too much, a little too creepy, or it feels ingenuine. I don't know about you, but if I talk to somebody and they're just like, they're jabbing me and talking to me with three, four, five things um, about me or too personalized in a real person conversation, I would feel like put off a little bit. I'd put my walls back up. So don't, don't do that. Only limit it to two to three people or two to three personalization in the, in the message. Compliment somebody. I usually compliment them um, in a piece of content they created, a company created or whatnot, because a compliment can go a long way. It gets their attention, it brings down their walls, it gets to the emotion way faster. Personalize the call to action based off the buyer persona. So again, if I'm talking to accountants, I'm selling, let's say I'm selling to small businesses and they're accountants versus um, a coffee shop owner versus a, um, you know, the owner of a gym. Those are all different things, right? Um, you need to adjust, and we'll get into segmentation in a second, but you almost need to segment the people you're talking to and adjust the call to action based off of that persona. Um, and link directly to um, landing pages. In fact, you can, I've seen in Mailshake and um, some of the best cold emails I've seen actually link to a personalized landing page where you take the name, the company, all the details you already know and you actually customize the landing page so it feels like um, that landing page is directly for them. Think about the same thing you would do on advertising, right? If you're, sending, if you're spending money on Facebook ads, you're generally going to send people to a Facebook campaign specific landing page and that message that you say on your ad might continue to be said on the landing page. Same thing goes with your emails. And send it from a person, not a company. Remember, that's really, really important. Um, I, I, I know that sounds very basic, but I can tell you uh, from emails I've received, as well as just looking at industry standard, uh, industry surveys and whatnot, that there's a lot of people still sending from the company. Do your research and collect the data. There's lots of different places you can get the data. We talked about this in lesson number three. That was a whole lesson on ways to find information, find people's contact information, and the details about them, right? So from social media, you can probably get someone's birthday and location. You already know their name. Um, you might be able to get their you know, favorite color, what their interests are. Now, favorite color is probably pretty hard because I don't know about you, but I don't have that listed anywhere. You have to kind of know me. But you can, you can definitely see what my interests are, not just based off of the interests on my profiles, the categories I, I'm interested in, but by what I say. If you go to my Facebook profile, you go to my LinkedIn, you could tell I'm a skydiver. I have a picture of me skydiving as my background. You can assume I'm a skydiver. So you, if you email me and said something about skydiving, I probably will at least respond to you saying, hell yeah, let's go jump out of a plane or something of that nature. So it's pretty easy to target people's interests and look at context more than just words that they subscribe to. Think about what they've purchased. Think about what they're searching for. Like, if you know I'm a, I'm a VP of marketing at a company, well, maybe you know I'm always looking for marketing people. I'm, I'm, you know, that you can look into my company, what channels we're doing. Maybe if you find out that we're advertising, um, maybe you can adjust your message there. Um, so if you know, like, for example, I, you know, I'm a co-founder of Mailshake, you know I'm a co-founder. You, if you do any research, you Google my name, you can tell I bootstrapped this, bootstrapped this thing. You can tell that we're, if you go to our website and our about page, you can tell we're a distributed team. Yes, that took two minutes to probably do this research, but that's what it's all about. And um, if you have, if you're using cold, you know, email for uh, sending emails based off of ways you've collected this email, forms, surveys, you know, you can even get this email and follow-ups and you can always scrape this. Again, we talked about a lot of this information and how to get this data 
in um, lesson number three. So let's talk about segmentation for a second. Segmentation is very, very important because frankly, words that trigger somebody, one person might upset the other person or might not resonate at all with the other person. So for example, if you're emailing me versus my co-founder, we're still both, let's say you're targeting SaaS uh, companies, is you're selling some sort of service to a SaaS company. If you email me versus my co-founder, Colin, who's a dev, who's the CTO, and I'm a marketer, we're not gonna resonate at all with the same thing. So it's important to put people in the categories. In fact, let's say you're targeting SaaS companies, you're talking about, you're targeting accountants, you're targeting small business owners, you're targeting salespeople, you're targeting marketers, you're talking about write, you know, writers, all of the people, one, first of all, their day-to-day -day is completely different. It looks, their lives are very, very different. So know that and think about what will work for everybody. Probably need to have a different template. You probably need to have different calls to actions, but segment based off of what people's lives are like. Segment based off of what their role is. Segment based off of different types of business, their location. All of these things are very, very important because you get this segmentation right and it's not just that you're, personal, you're sending more personalized emails, you're sending better, more relevant emails. So when we talk about personalization, isn't it mean like you have to get information about me liking skydiving, but you have to know that I'm a marketer versus emailing my co-founder who's a CTO, right? We, you have to realize that you are different people and segmenting this can help you better personalize your emails. So here's another way to personalize. It's to get their attention before you send that email, before you try to pitch them anything. Follow somebody on social media. Share their content on social media. Join LinkedIn, Slack, or whatever groups they're part of, right? You can easily tell when you go to that person's profile on LinkedIn what LinkedIn groups they're in. Um, you might not be able to tell what Slack groups they're on, but do your research. This all comes a part of research. Comment on their blog. Again, share their blog post. Mention them in your own blog post. And if you're a salesperson and you're thinking, oh, I don't write content, well, anybody can write content on Medium and LinkedIn. In fact, I would do that first uh, because it's a good way to kind of build your brand and your authority as an individual. Email their content to your list. Tell, you could, that's an excuse to tell them about it if, you have, if you're a marketer. Send them an email with a compliment. And don't say anything else. Just say, hey, love your content. Really help me get through this big problem I was working through. I usually do one or two of those every week just to tell people I appreciate what they're working on. Now, it's not I'm going back to them and selling them something, but it's building relationship, building the network and whatnot. Leverage a connection. You can name drop if you have a connection in common. You might be able to mention their name. Say, hey, we're connected to this guy. I thought I'd reach out because you know Greg and I were talking about this, and if you're connected through Greg, you might more likely open that email. Maybe they got a promotion recently or you know, they're speaking at an upcoming conference. Mention that. Another clever way here is Find them on clarity.fm, cloud peeps, or any paid service and pay them for their time. I can guarantee you if you offer to pay somebody for their time on a service they already are accepting payment for their time, you've got their attention. You're paying for it. It works. Follow them on AngelList or Product Hunt or con if they're active there, connect with them. Um, connect at an in-person event. Whoa. Yeah, real life. You can actually do this. Go to a conference you know they're, coming, they're at. Um, Maybe they have a booth, maybe, they have a, maybe they're maybe they speaking, maybe they're just attending and they tweet about it. Well, go there too, right? Um, easy ways to get people's attention before you actually um, email them. And now, personalization is all, at the end of the day, all about the person receiving it and them feeling that you sent that email, that, that you know what they're talking about, you understand what they're talking about, or um, at least they feel like it's just not a spam blanket email. So it's all about kind of penetrating through and sometimes that can happen by simply getting their attention or um, building a relationship before you have to sell something.